All right, we are making chicken gyros today on the Joe Tisserie. Uh, we're actually making it tomorrow, but we're gonna go ahead and marinate our chicken today, season it today, put it in the fridge, let it all come together, and then we will stack up our rotisserie and get it on there. If you've seen my tacos out past door video, it's a similar process. We're gonna shave as we go. Uh, we're gonna let the meat marinate overnight. Um, so chicken gyros, there's a million different ways to do this. Uh, you know I like to do things easy. I am not gonna make my own seasoning from scratch and do all that. Obviously, you're welcome to do it. I am going to take these chicken thighs. So you can use chicken breast, but um, chicken thighs are much better for, for something like this. Um, we got these chicken thighs from Costco. This is gonna be four pounds. So when we're done, you'll see how much four pounds actually makes for you. You'll see how much that, uh, what that looks like on the Joe Tisserie. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna marinate it in some salad dressing and some chicken scratch seasoning. So not very complicated. Obviously, this happens to be Italian, but it has a lot of the similarities in a Greek salad dressing. I'm actually probably gonna put some feta crumbles in the bag too. But again, this is just to get some seasoning on this chicken um, and get it ready for, for tomorrow. You can use any seasoning you want. Lots of people do this dry, so to marinate it in just dry seasoning and not a liquid. But we're gonna use liquids um, and a little bit of solid here. So let's get it in our bag, we'll get it in the fridge, and then we'll come back tomorrow, we'll light our fire, build the rotisserie, and go from there. All right, so we've got our chicken mixed really well in here with the chicken scratch seasoning and the salad dressing. Again, you can use any seasoning you want, of course. Pay closer attention to the process than the seasoning if you'd like. This comes out really, really well because at the end of the day, once it cooks, some of these flavors will render down and crisp up. So it's not gonna taste like salad dressing, obviously. It's gonna taste like the herbs and spices and stuff that were in there. So uh, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm actually gonna put this in another bag because uh, you know some stuff on the outside here. But we're gonna put this in the fridge and um, we'll check back in tomorrow when we light our fire and get this all um, put on our rotisserie. All right, we are doing those chicken gyros. So it's the next day, uh, we marinated our chicken overnight, and now I'm getting the grill ready. Once I have this fire lit, we're gonna go inside and get the, uh, I guess the skewer, whatever you wanna call it ready. So if you notice, I have half of a charcoal basket. That's because we don't want complete direct heat the entire time. You know, as the meat rotates, it'll get a little bit of a break on top. Cook, get a break, cook, get a break, right? So uh, we have our coals banked to the back. This is the kick ash basket. It comes with this basket divider. This can go anywhere in here. So I did about, I don't know, maybe three quarters and a quarter or two thirds, a third, not true 50-50. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility here, the basket and the divider. Uh, I'll put a link in my description. So now, just like our wing video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep the skewer. So when this fire's lit, this is hot as hell. And we're gonna be looking for like 400 something degrees today. So I don't wanna be you know, fidgeting with this, with the meat on it and my hand underneath. So what I like to do is get this ready ahead of time. So if you look here, there's a little square. The square is what this rod lines up with. So I'm gonna get that square parallel or even. So it's not at some weird angle and I'm trying to shove it in. So right there is good. Now I'm gonna put my rod in, I'm gonna rest it. And I am going to put this tighten this first skewer about here because this is the edge of the actual uh, fire pit okay so now when we take this inside this is nice and tight when we take this inside I'm gonna load it up with chicken and then we'll slide the other end on if I need to adjust it to center it I can do that but what I wanted to do is at least for now get this ready down here and factor in that even if this is as long as possible we'll be good because what you don't want to happen is we get this, I didn't do my pre-measuring. I have my skewer like this all the way in the end. I'm trying to shove it in, my hand is burning, and now it sits too far to the side. It's not over the fire or it doesn't fit at all. So I like to get this prepped. We will get this skewer sort of right over the fire here. I'll tighten this side and now we'll light this fire and then we'll go inside and get this ready with our chicken. Once this is lit, we're looking for like 400, 425, something like that. Once that's ready, we'll pop this on and we're gonna shave as we go. So let's go inside and load this up. Okay, let's get our skewer ready. 
We have our skewer. You watched me uh, calibrate it. We have an onion and we have our uh, marinated chicken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this onion in half. I'm gonna shove half of it down the line. If you watch my tacos al pastor video, we um, secured the tacos with um, two pieces of pineapple. We're doing the same thing with an onion. So this is very straightforward. Cut the onion, shove it on, load the chicken up, and we want it to be even, meaning I don't want, I don't want huge pieces of chicken and small pieces of chicken. I want it to be as even and uniform as possible, and I definitely don't want any big, loose, hanging pieces, because those will burn right up. So uh, let's get this loaded up, and then uh, once our fire's ready, we'll put it on. Okay, we've got this loaded up. It's pretty even. There are a couple of small loose hanging pieces, but honestly, that's just the nature of chicken thighs. Um, it's not breast, right? So it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty jagged, complicated piece of meat to begin with. So we have this loaded up. This was four pounds. So this is what four pounds looks like. That's about six inches thick and maybe four inches. So six by four, something like that. So it's a lot of meat. You can feel it. Um, we have this nice and tight, so we should be good. I might have to make a micro adjustment to get it centered over the fire, but we should be good for now. And even if I do, I'm not gonna burn my hand up because I can just hold it over and see. So I'm gonna go check on our fire. Once the fire's ready, uh, we'll get this on. After this goes on, it will probably take an hour or so for it to get cooked enough to start shaving. And then once we start shaving, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might use the electric um, the electric knife that we saw from Chaco's Al Pastor, or I might take this off and shave it with a knife. We'll see, I'll cross that bridge when I get there, but uh, let's check on our fire. I told you about 400 something. So that's like, you know, 400, 425, something like that. It doesn't have to be exact, especially with rotisserie, there's some forgiveness there. So check it on the fire, and if that's good, we'll get this loaded up and we'll start this cook. All right, the fire is going strong, so we're good here. Um, if you see, I did put the X rack in, in case I decide to shave as we go. I just want um, a base to be able to put that tin foil bin on. But let's go ahead and get our skewer on the rack. We already lined this up, so it just pops right in and we're done. I'm not burning my hand, there's no issues here. Let's turn it on. Watch her go for a minute. So there are a few pieces hanging down. Those are just gonna burn. That is what it is. But the uh, the majority of it's pretty uniform. So we'll just let this go. Um, I'll probably check on it every now and then, but uh, I don't anticipate that we can shave it for about an hour. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna probe this, but uh, I might just to see what the temperature is. But these are pretty thin cuts of chicken. So we'll be able to tell when, I'm gonna close this so the fire doesn't get too big. Uh, we'll be able to tell when it's done by color and texture, um, but but uh, we'll check back in about an hour and I'll keep you updated and, and then you can reverse engineer how long this will take from start to finish. So um, we'll come back in a bit and uh, see where we are. So we're around 400, which is right where we want to be. We'll take a quick check. It's about half an hour uh, and it looks good. We have a couple of darker pieces, but those are like the thinner tips and some of the stuff that was hanging down. And it actually looks like this side more. So um, when we cut this, what I might do is take it off, cut the meat, and then um, you know maybe adjust it to the side. But um, so far it looks good. I, we expect some of this stuff. So it looks good. Uh, we'll come back in about a half an hour. There's no way this is done yet. But we'll come back in about a half an hour. We'll, we'll start cutting. I actually think I am gonna take this off and slice it. Uh, Cause last time I used the electric. So let's try this method. Well, we'll check back in another half an hour and uh, see where we are. Okay, so we cut the meat. While we have this out, I'm probably going to tighten this up a little bit and then we'll put it back on. Get it back on. 
Okay, so heat gloves are a must for this. So I'll put those in the description. Uh, we'll come back every 15 minutes at this point. The chicken's pretty much cooked. We're just getting some nice little crisp on the outside. Uh, I may come back and baste it, but um, you know, we're gonna let this go and then uh, we'll just keep checking in periodically to shave it off. I actually am going to baste this. So we have a little more of our marinade here and I'm just gonna do a nice, quick rub, get it on here. We tried some of this inside and these burnt bits are actually amazing. They're probably the best tasting pieces because they're burnt, you know, they're a little charred, but they have a ton of flavor. Um, and this is this is about as juicy as chicken's gonna get for you. But um, I'm just doing a quick baste here while it rotates. And once we get all the way around, we'll shut this lid. And like I said, uh, we'll give it about 15, 20 minutes or so. And then uh, we'll go ahead and cut off our next layer. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's do our next cut. Shut this off, take it out. And we're gonna cut it the same way we did the last one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cinch this back up tight. If you notice, it's starting to loosen up. That's because we're, you know, we're cutting away pieces. It's starting, you know, it's cooking. As it's cooking, it's contracting a bit. So let's just tighten this. Nice and tight. And you can see here too, some is still raw, some is cooked. And that's why it's important that we cook it this way on the rotisserie and we shave as we go because if we just took it off the outside would burn the inside would be undercooked so we need to uh, run the whole process so let's turn this back on we're gonna baste it again we'll baste it again and uh, we'll just continue this process come back ever ah, damn it those were good pieces too that sucks uh, we'll continue this process we'll baste it um, we'll come back in 15, 20 minutes or so once it really starts to look nice and brown. And then uh, we'll start shaving and then rinse and repeat. All right, we are pretty much done here. So I'm gonna take this off. Uh, I'm not really able to shave it anymore because of the, uh, the prongs here. So I'm gonna take it off entirely. I'll move it to a cutting board and I'll just chop it up that way. But um, all in all, this was probably about two hours. So it was an hour for the first cook, you know, an hour for the first shave, and then a little bit, you know, another 15 after, 20 after, and so on and so forth. So it's about a two hour cook, and then whatever time it takes you to get your, your grill up to temperature. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, they came out delicious. We're already eating up the chicken. Uh, that's the only problem with a cook like this is, you know, it's 20 minutes or 15 minutes between shavings. So you don't want the original chicken to get cold. So it's more of an eat as you go kind of thing or, you know, keep the meat warm, you know, as you're uh, while you're waiting. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to cut it up. If you have any questions, let me know, um, you know, like subscribe. I definitely appreciate the, uh, the interaction and the feedback uh, in the description. I will have links to the gloves um, and everything else we used so that, you know, if you want to do it the way I did it, you can. But uh, feel free to, to comment and uh I'll see you guys soon.